You're listening to Movie Sucktastic. <laughs> like some bad movie. By the way, welcome to Movie Sucktastic. This is the welcome. movie podcast yeah. um, where we review bad movies. Uh, so there are sometimes some good ones. This is episode number 170-something? 171. Ah, got it. And uh, before we start our review for t- this episode, which is Gosh, Death Wish, it. Charles yes, Bronson... 1974. Do you want us? Do you want to launch us into the uh, the Death Wish, which is uh, not really was a, my. It was what? <laughs> not, no, what? I'm kidding. <laughs> I, I missed it. I no, I, I, you said, "Do I want to?" And I said, "Not really." Okay, I'll, I'll do it. No. Uh, no, no uh, our last episode no, I, I, reviewed I, I, Times I, Square. That's right. And I and challenged you to Death Wish. Yes, the theme, the connection was New York, but then uh, you you made a, a pretty uh, a fine joke of. Uh, it's a girl that doesn't talk much. Uh. Well, that's who. I mean, <laughs> not it's a stretch, but it's it was still funny. <laughs> now, now, had I, had had we not reviewed Patrick and I knew about the film, I might re- I might ch- have challenged that to you. <laughs> She's mm-hmm. practically catatonic, living in her eyes. That's it. <laughs> but um, uh, now, speaking of the links between the two films, uh, I, I want to. I know we haven't even talked about Death Wish yet, but I just want to mention, as, as far as between the two of them, a lot in a lot of our review of Times Square had to do with the soundtrack. Yes. And I would like to point out the soundtrack in Death Wish. Uh, oh, Herbie the, Hancock. Herbie Hancock soundtrack, which I was totally not digging for the first two thirds of the film. Nah. Am I? It's not just me. No, no, no. I, I I I don't want to say I have a problem with this film. I've never been a real fan of the first Death Wish. I don't hate the movie by any means, oh, no, but no. Death Wish Two, Death Wish Three is where it's fucking at. If you want to talk about Death Wish movies, the third one, the the, the one with the um, the gangs in L.A. Oh, that's the best. That not is the favorite. best one. Fuck it. There's a missile launcher at one point. I mean, come on. Neo Nazis. The 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 main villain is the the, the deadbeat father from Superman three. <laughs> I mean, it's just a it's great. My it's which my just, favorite Death Wish, which I just rewatched recently. So I'm glad you mentioned that. Oh, okay, well we can talk about now, the junkyard scene again. Yeah, I'll never get now, tired of talking about the junkyard scene in Superman three. No, it's fucking awesome. Uh, now uh, this soundtrack for Death Wish by Herbie Hancock was yeah. nominated for a Grammy Award for Best Original Score. For motion picture. Uh, yeah. I, I mean, they're now, just the, recognizing I think, Herbie Hancock's talent, obviously. Yes, because now I watched Death Wish 2 first because I was going through a Death Wish phase. Oh. And Death Wish 2 is even worse because it has those kind of weird, uh, like, synthesizer. It's just like really, just like someone with a synthesizer just fucking around. When did the second Not, one come out? Was that a couple of years later? 76? I think it was, like, it was almost like the next year. They like rushed that shit right oh, out. Wow. I don't have I don't have it in front of me. Um, what year did this come out? This was 72, 74, 74. That's right. Cause the book yeah. came out in 72 and this came out only a couple years later. Oh, I'm sorry. Death Wish 2 was 10 years later, 82. Was it that fucking long? Yeah. Then Death Wish 3, they cranked out, uh, three in years 85. later. Death Wish 4. What? Uh, yeah. 85. It, and 80... then 4 came out in 87. No, no, no. So I know. They... I, well, yes. Yeah. 83, 85 was Death Wish 3. You're right. Right. Um, and then Death Wish Five was that—that that was the last one. I think that came out in '89. Uh huh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's the one with the the remote control basketball, or balloon. I forget which. Uh, I, I've to this day I've never seen Death Wish Five. I've seen them all. I, I've never seen. I've <laughs> and believe me, I, I aspire to see them all. 
But I've, I've never, ever gone out of my way to see the fifth one. I just, for whatever reason, no, 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 there is a reason. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, now, uh, yeah, so just to wrap up Herbie Hancock thing, the soundtrack, the first two parts I don't like, but all of a sudden it gets funky in the last act. All of a sudden you get that like 70s disco kind of, uh, you know, the waka chicka As soon as the cop starts tailing him, it, it goes funk. I, like, I could now, easily envision pornography to this music. Yeah, great. That, that, yeah, that's the, that's the that's the type of music. Yep. It, it, or at least at least halfway through when he starts becoming a vigilante, if you're trying to do this whole, this is the you know this the music is the psychology of the main character, then don't wait until the cops start trailing him before you start laying down the funk. Dude, <laughs> rub it on, rub it in there early. Get get it going. Um. Uh, you're right. It's not a great film. No, uh, it's definitely flawed. Uh, all right, the, the trailer that we played at the beginning of the movie, yeah. uh, the be- beginning of the show, uh, 70s horrible trailers. And that's got to be one of the worst I've ever heard. I mean, this, the, the opening of the trailer for a split second, I thought was fucking whiplash. Uh, it just, <laughs> just, it's just, whoa. <laughs> thanks. Her- thanks, Herbie. Th- thank you, Herbie. Th- th- thanks, Herbie. <laughs> Up um, to New York, walk the streets. <laughs> and and one thing that uh, I, and I I actually watched this movie about six months ago, and I decided to re even though I don't I didn't have to rewatch it for the review tonight, I decided I wanted to because I like keeping the films fresh in my head. You know, oh, you, you've got to revisit them, yeah. Well, only because I know you're going to mention something, and if I. Try, trying to remember from six months ago, it, it's the, the the review doesn't go as in my head doesn't go as smooth for me. It, it, it doesn't work out as much as I would I like it to. So I watched it last night, and something that I thought of six months ago that in rewatching it last night I remembered Charles Bronson is not a good actor. <laughs> <laughs> he is he's not what well he, what, you know when he's a great actor. When he doesn't have to talk much, because he at his face it delivers the performance, you know. Valachi papers, uh, once upon a time in the West, um, you know, movies like that. Uh, this movie where he has to emote ain't happening. Like yeah, when he, he when when he gets mugged for the first time and he has the sock full of quarters, and he's you know he he knocks the guy out. He goes right back to his apartment. Uh, well, actually, there's a scene before that. I'll do that in a second. But he goes back to his apartment, does a drink, and he's shaking like crazy. He's just, it's like, it's, you're not convincing me. You're not. Or this, the uh, earlier when the doctor comes out and he tells uh, his son-in-law, oh, yeah, she's doing fine. Oh, yeah, your wife's dead. It's like, <laughs> worst bedside manners ever. <laughs> now, I, I want to mention. But he reason. starts shaking in that scene and they have a close up, yeah. like, of his face and his eyes. And it's like, is it that bad? That they do this close up for literally two or three seconds and then fade out. It just not a good performance by him. You, you, you mentioned the doctor. I just want to mention this very briefly. Uh, I, I'm going to make these make some comparisons to the book. And when I was rewatching it, that scene came up and he's like, "Yeah, your, your wife didn't make it." It's like and I, I had the same reaction you did. It's like Jesus Christ, man, you want, you want to ease into that? Yeah. But in, I, I, I was I went back and uh, reread the book just to refresh myself with that too. And same thing in the book. Like in the book, it mentions like it, it even says like the doctor didn't even care. Like he's he's been numb to this shit. So it's interesting that the stuff that they did keep from the book, like just a little thing like that, where the doctor says, "Yeah, I'm not going to come for you." You know, it, it's it's New York City. Your wife's dead. Rape the death. <laughs> yeah, Jeff Goldblum. Yeah, the fly himself, Brundle Fly. <laughs> I'm getting better. <laughs> I'm getting bigger. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, um, but but you're right. He he doesn't emote well. Uh, not at I, all. I, I think I think I, I noticed that as well. Uh, he he can do kind of happy, and he can do kind of angry, and then anything else outside of that range is just like okay. He's leaning more towards happy. Oh, you mean like uh, later in the film when he's blasting music and practically doing <laughs> the the mambo? Exactly. <laughs> Turn it up. I can't hear it. <laughs> Come on. It's like Dad. What's the, I got to live my life, don't I? It's like, yeah, but she died a week ago. Yeah, but I've killed three people with a gun, and I feel great. And, and the problem is they're trying to show mood swings in the character, and it's hard to show mood swings with somebody who doesn't really 
give emotion that well. So it's almost like they had to do it just on the level of how he's yelling. So, mm-hmm. okay, in the beginning, you're going to yell happy. But then ap- after he asks you a couple questions, you're going to yell sad and angry. So I, can do, I can do that. And then I'll dig. And I'll dig and I'll dig. And I'll dig some more. Sure, Charlie. Or as my father calls him, Charlie Bronson. Dad, <laughs> no one ever calls him that. Except Not you. Not to his face. For for as long as I've been alive, I've only ever heard my father refer to him as Charlie Bronson. <laughs> um, Charlie, now, possibly the most unmacho man name ever. <laughs> next to next to Mortimer and uh, Fauntleroy. Uh, sure. <laughs> now, if if you're like me, you you went you know you go back and revisit the film, and everybody in their head, Death Wish, all you think is, oh yeah, that's the film where Charles Bronson runs around and shoots people. Yeah. Uh, but what, what you always forget until you watch it again for the first time is, mm-hmm. oh, wait, it opens up with Charles Bronson in a Speedo. <laughs> <laughs> ah! And my second thought is, God damn, he's in amazing shape for like 50. <laughs> like, what the fuck? Uh, yeah, it's like, holy, uh, why, he doesn't need a gun. He can kick the... F- no, he, 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 he's got a couple of guns already. <laughs> <laughs> Bam, <laughs> under the gun shield. Uh, women and children free. Yeah. And, and it's <laughs> odd. You, you have an, uh, an older guy uh, who, uh, honestly, the, his body is the more attractive part of his. I, mean, I don't I don't think he's handsome. Is no. He, is he, I, no, he's not a handsome I don't know man. why he, he has that stupid mustache. But, I mean, he, he became known for it. But uh, he's. Just a thing. You he's, know, people like He's that. like only that much better looking without it. But the key is he's better looking without it. I, I think <laughs> he is better looking with it. But that's just me. Um, I think he's one of the few guys who can pull off a mustache. That's me. No, no, no. Um, but I so. uh, it's it, it's just odd. You have somebody like he, in that good of shape, like you're saying, especially you know, and uh, and he, through the whole film, they just make sure he's wearing bulky coats. And not at any point is he like stripped down to a t-shirt. He's like, oh, you know, I got shot. But you know, <laughs> yeah, you know, we'll let him flex a little. Come on. Ah. <laughs> uh, um. Yeah, he, he covers up those uh, those guns through the whole movie, except, in, like you said, when they're in Hawaii in the opening shot. <laughs> Which, now, the opening shot, the beginning of the film, we meet his wife. And in the book, you never meet the wife. Uh, the book starts with him at his office, and he gets the call. And the book is mostly in the character's head. It's, it's a lot of um, character development and, you know, uh, inner monologue. And it, and it traces the... the emotional and mental descent after the tragedy strikes his family. Uh, oh, clown so, hammer. <laughs> clown hammer's coming. Are we, are we going to jump to that right now because it's showing? Or, or I mean, we can. Wait? Well, what we can do, we could just br- mention briefly that the author, um, what was his name? Something Garfield. Brian Garfield. Uh, he wrote the screenplay for this movie. So mm-hmm. any changes that he made to for the film, for the adaptation to screen, might have been something, it's like, yeah, it works well you know, in my book, but you know, at you know, adapted to the screen, it works. There's it's clown hammer. <laughs> it works better uh, this way, where it kind of builds uh, maybe some more tension. It shows the love that they have between the two of them because it starts out in Hawaii, and he wants to take a picture, wants to take another picture, one more picture. Oh man, and, hor- guys... it's, and it's horrible. And yeah, it's horrible. Well, it is bad. But it, yeah. I think what he's trying to convey in the film is that they had this really great, you know, uh, love for each other. Right. Um, but whether it works it, or not, it, you know, it's a different story. But I it, think it, that's why they did it that way. Yeah. And, and you know, I don't know anything. About, I didn't look into anything about the actual screenwriting itself, which is unusual for me. But um, sometimes, like, just because you can write a book doesn't mean you can write a screenplay. And I think that kind of comes through a bit in the uh, yeah, in as the movie. proven time and time again. Yeah. Uh, I, I, the book's better on some levels, but just because it was written for a different, you know, uh, perspective from a different perspective for the book right um i mean now anybody listening or watching who's not familiar with death wish god forbid uh it's, it's about uh the main character who is uh the character's uh paul kersey in the film paul benjamin in the book in the book he's an account an accountant in the movie he's an architect and uh, that's pretty much the only differences you really need to know after and it's all pretty much the same uh he lives in new york city uh, one Any day reason while why uh, the name change, the last name change? Uh, it just seems like I, a, such a small thing, like a why bother thing to do. Uh, sometimes it's just because it's easier to pronounce on screen uh, if you have a weird name. Because I'll tell you personally, 
uh, I mean, remember like watching Crank? Yeah. And and his the main character's name is Chev Chelios. <laughs> yeah. And everybody and everybody that's saying his name has a thick accent. And like half an hour of the film is like, I'm still not convinced what this guy's name is. I'm still not a. I had to look it up. It's like half an hour of this film. I don't Chelios. know what his name is. I think <laughs> I know. Yeah, it, it's a, <laughs> and I think they did it on purpose. <laughs> but just yeah, sometimes they'll just you. change the name. Yeah, I mean, they just want to make it a more generic, more uh, simple name. You know. All right, so let's pull up this first picture that you have. No, no, no. Here. Hang on, hang no? on. We're, okay, you want to? Well, okay, you want to introduce it? Fine. Well, I just want to get more into the. I was just anything else. I want to. That's my big finish. My big finish. Joey's got a slideshow. I'm going to go through you guys. It's not going to take that long. No. Uh, so are wait. we? Are we done with the movie for the slideshow? I, I haven't. I, I was. Well, I was no. I was saying I was oh, okay. just trying to describe the plot. We haven't even like talked about the film itself in, as a whole. Fine. So I don't want to. This you know, is going to be a long episode tonight. No, it's well, it's not. If I, if I we <laughs> we keep we're doing what we always do. We side trip. We sidestep. So we're we're yeah. almost an yeah. hour into the show, and we haven't even given like the main synopsis of the movie. It's Gino's besides, fault. Right. <laughs> no, it's all Gino's fault. But, uh, but okay, yeah, but. Paul's at work. His wife and daughter are brutally raped. The wife right. dies. Uh, the daughter slips into catatonia. And uh, I, I love the scene ups- that's on right now, by the way, not to interrupt Which you, one? where no, he no. gets the pictures. It's like two weeks later, oh. a month later. Oh, it's like it's it's like, first of all, it's like shit. Yeah. Stuff like that used to take that long. <laughs> <laughs> that's a, I mean, so horror. I'm watching. It's, it's a scene where you're supposed to be like, oh, he's reminded of the love of his life. And all I'm thinking is like. Man, remember when you had the Send film out to be developed? What the? <laughs> Holy shit. I mean, e- even I in the 80s, it. they figured that out a little bit. Usually got it the next day. <laughs> but this is 1974, motherfucker. Yeah. It's it, like, uh, here's my film, and you just let me know when it's ready. Oh, it's like uh, two months later? Oh, okay. It, it's like when we used to have to reserve films at your VHS store. It's like, oh, I want, you know... Bloodsport with Jean Claude Van Damme. Oh yeah, that'll be ready in six weeks. What? Yeah, you, you got two hundred people ahead of you. The uh, the um, uh, Robin Williams film One Hour Photo would have been such a different film if it took place in the early seventies. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, but, I'm sorry. I, Go ahead. It, no, no, it's okay. What I what I love about that scene is one of those things in the film where you, like, it's like, okay, we we did the whole picture thing as as a setup, and then later we'll reveal it. And it's the, it's supposed to show oh he misses her and it's supposed to remind her so like, he just went to the funeral his daughter still ca- he doesn't need a ma- re- reminder we know right <laughs> so we know he knows he's still living in the same apartment the paint from the rapist is still on their wall he hasn't even repainted yet we don't need pictures <laughs> yeah and, pictures. and even when he's burying his well I'm sorry go ahead no see he's, he, there's pictures around the house of the wife oh he yeah. doesn't need new ones. Well, exactly, and, and when he's burying burying his wife, and uh, uh, the the son in law is like, uh, "You going home?" He's like, "I got to go home sometime." It's like it's literally like two days later. <laughs> right, oh, no. And just to clarify, he didn't actually bury his wife. They had a service, and the people put it. He didn't actually have to bury her himself. No, well, he's Charles Bronson. He might have. <laughs> well, you know, it... <laughs> he did that shit one arm, one handed. <laughs> now. I mean, the film really is kind of drags a lot because uh, the film that's takes a, a long a time. Word. The book does too. Uh, he doesn't start killing people like the last fifty pages uh, in the book. Wow. But he really he he takes his time and gets this whole idea of like fighting back and and uh, uh, holy shit! I, did you ever realize that magazines were were advertised so preval- preval- uh, prevalently, uh, so much, <laughs> so much <laughs> in the seventies? Uh, I'm not even gonna try. My yeah. tongue's not tongue's fighting me on that one. It's like this film, all these billboards in New York City, and every time you see a billboard, it's for a magazine about vigilantism. It's like, is all they sell magazines? I, I, I haven't seen one porno <laughs> ad yet. I haven't seen one <laughs> billboard for cigarettes. But every time, you, every time you see a billboard behind them, it's just, uh, this. in this month's weekly review, is the vigilante a good thing or a bad thing? Right. Man, magazine yeah. subscriptions were fucking gangbusters back then. I know. Oh, this pen doesn't work. And they were sold by midgets. Uh, yeah, they, they wanted to make sure that little guy got something. I don't know. You know maybe you know maybe it was like make a wish. For, I don't know. It's always a bad call. Uh, remember when we reviewed JD's Revenge? Yeah. And in, in the beginning when he buys this hat, uh, there's a guy in the sh- sh- this like little antique store and he buys a hat from him. And the guy's got an eye patch. 
And all of a sudden, I don't care about JD's story. I want to know why this guy with that eye patch is selling hats now. <laughs> What's this guy's back? So as soon as like Charles Bronson says, like the midget says hi to him, he says hi back. First of all, he's on a first name basis with the midget. That's right. He even puts or his least, hand on his shoulder at one point. Yeah. He's a, he's he's in the kind of thing where they can touch. He can touch him as high. Yes. So, so he knows the midget. They're acquainted. <laughs> They're acquainted. I want to know more about this relationship with the midget. Well, yeah. And I also want to know how does the midget reach the magazines on the top rack? Because that thing's a good eight feet, nine feet up in the air. How is he selling those magazines? How maybe, is he putting? He, maybe them up he had there? a stool off off you know off camera. I don't know. That high? That's dangerous. He could fall. Oh. Midgets don't heal quickly. That's not a good idea. <laughs> they don't heal. How do you know that? That sounds I know. pretty racist. I not racist. You little fuckers it's, don't heal well. <laughs> it's just a fact. It, 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 I'm 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 concerned for the midget. It has nothing I heard, to do. I heard you not, say it just like that too. Yeah, I'm, it's, it's it's out of concern. Ah, okay. Oh. Now, I just wrote <laughs> down my uh, potential movie challenges to you before I forget them. <laughs> okay. Um, I mean, honestly, there's not much else to talk about in the film except Charles Bronson runs around to shoot people. Uh, and then uh, the only other great character in the film is uh, Vincent Gardenia. As the I cop. love him. I love him. Oh, he's great. And he comes back in part two as well. Oh, does he? <laughs> yeah, he I does. I forgot. I haven't seen part two in a really long time. Um, I say I watched I watched that first. Holly and I were on like a kick, so let's watch Death Wish. It's on Netflix, and we watched two, and then we watched one. And I was, you know, she's, she's like, "So what happened to this? Oh, she died here. She died, you know, it's like I still have it in my head. Uh, now, while we're watching it, yeah, again, and I, I I mentioned this before. I feel like when I watch films with Holly because it's almost like it's a one-upmanship to find bizarre things in films, that I'm paying attention more when I watch movies with her, especially rewatching them. So we're watching Death Wish, which I've probably seen a dozen times in my lifetime. She's probably seen it a few. And we get to the airport scene. Uh, slide number one, please, sir. Uh, sure. Let me just put that over in the frame. Uh, there we go. Slide number one. Okay, now in slide one, we we just started the airport sequence, and we're very aware that this is a, a 70s film, so these are extras walking around that have been hired to walk around and pretend to be uh, airport people. So the first thing I notice, off to the right here, is the aging beatnik with the pipe. <laughs> he catches my eye. They, they can't just get a bunch of regular people. they got to get people that want to be noticed. So uh, immediately I'm noticing this, this, uh, this aging beatnik guy. So, all right, we've got shit going on in the background. Next slide, please. Uh, Airport picture number two. I should make like a sounder. Whoosh. <laughs> <laughs> Beep. Beep. Uh, picture, picture number two, you'll notice that on the left-hand side, we have a cowboy in a poncho. <laughs> what the fuck is that about? Uh -huh. Where's the cowboy going from New York City? He's going to Tucson. Now, in my head, <laughs> in, or in my head as opposed to thinking outside of my body, Immediately, I think, wait a minute, like is this that. a nod to the Western theme of Charles Bronson's career? Because later on in the movie, he makes at the very end, he makes a couple of uh, Western references because he's kind of turned New York City into the Old West, which and he bought that he got his gun in Nevada. So it, it's a whole Western theme, but it, it's not really overplayed in the movie at all. Not but Nevada, it's almost like uh, he got it in Tucson, Arizona. Ari I meant Arizona. Sorry. Okay. Uh, my, my, my mistake. It's OK now. So so it's, it's like, OK, are they foreshadowing it? This movie's not that clever. I don't know. But whether no. they meant to or not, there's a cowboy go walking towards gate one, uh, one through seven. Yes. Next slide. Beep. <laughs> now, if you look in the background, just to clarify, you can see that the cowboy and the beatnik are both heading towards gates one through seven. They're going towards the gates, right? Yes. That's where you get your planes. I mean, That's is, where they're is, going. Is, is that like the seven gates of hell? Is that what that's representing, or is that just uh, a coincidence? Well, it, it, it's nine la it's nine layers of hell, isn't it? I thought it was seven gates of hell. Maybe I'm thinking so of some. You, maybe I'm you're, thinking you're, horror you're, movie, you're thinking, maybe. You're, think, you're thinking of the end of uh, Defending Your Life when they have the seven tunnels going to heaven. Oh, m maybe. I think you are, and that's no, creepy that I would guess that if that is what you're thinking it's about. possible, but, so, I, but seven gates of hell rings a bell with me for some reason. So I, I just wanted to point out that as uh, – 
Paul meets his stepson, they or son in law. They are uh, the the cowboy and the beatnik are heading towards the gates to head towards the plains, and they're they're not just like wandering; they're moving with purpose. Next slide, Beep. picture four. <laughs> All right, on the left you'll see a an aging uh, John Lennon wannabe sexually molesting a woman in the middle of the airport. <laughs> yeah, he's they got his to... whole whole hand on the back of her, her head. It's just like they're walking yeah. in the film. They're walking at a at a speedy clip from the left. They, he purposely stops her, tongue gouges her, and then they continue on. <laughs> on the uh, right, you're going to notice a man holding a potted plant. Uh, yes, there he is. Yes, it's not like it's, we're talking. We're talking a five, six foot potted tree. <laughs> Where did wait, this guy? Wait, get is a that in this slide? Foot? Yeah, on the far right. It? Yes, in this slide. On the far right. It's hard to tell now, but you'll see him later. Okay, I'm, I'm not really seeing potted. him in this slide. You're on the slide with the tongue gouging, yes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. At the very far right, there's a guy with a white scarf. Oh, he's, well, okay. I can okay, barely make it, out, make it out, but... You'll, you'll, you'll see him again. No, he, oh, there's a lot of reoccurrences going on. The conspiracy okay. thickens, sir. Next slide. Oh, okay. Beep. <laughs> Just to, to the left of the son-in-law, you'll see the pimp daddy. Yeah, uh, yep, there he is. We got the pimp daddy with the coat slung over the shoulders, the red-brimmed hat. Pimp Daddy is heading towards the gates. The gate, everyone's going. That's where the party is. Right. Now, at this point, I'm really amused. Next slide. There we go. Next slide. Now, if you look in the upper right-hand corner, coming down the stairs is a guy carrying what looks like to be a giant red clown hammer. <laughs> when I challenged Joey to this film, I told him, clown hammer. Then, uh... A couple hours before the show, I get a text from Joey. Clown Hammer. <laughs> he found I have I did Google searches. I could not find any reference to this guy with the clown hammer. <laughs> I I can find nobody. Am I the first person to notice the clown hammer? It's a, it's a, you should make your own IMDB thread. And I, just I, just see. What Seriously. The fuck with the, it it, I, it I, would be it would be pre- Listen, I've looked at some of the threads for Death Wish. It needs it. It fucking needs a clown hammer thread, okay? Well, you know we, so we, you should. we should go and do that. I, I need to get our official movie sectastic uh, uh, thing running on IMDb. Uh, I, I think we have it under our name, but I have to make sure it's all up. I have to update it, basically. But yes, okay. if I update that, I will start the clown hammer thread. Uh, next slide. Okay, next slide. Next slide, you'll see in the background, clown hammer descending the staircase. <laughs> Yeah, there he is. You will also see to the right the man holding the potted plant. And I keep calling it a plant. It's really a tree. It's a small tree. It's as tall as he is. Yeah, it's over his it's fucking still, shoulder. It, yeah, it's it's it's, little, it's still a little hard to see that it's, he's carrying it. But it's, he is it's like he it, picked it up within the airport and is stealing it. Which is the only thing that makes sense to me. <laughs> it's the only thing that makes sense. Oh, right, I like this slide. fucking plant. I'm going to take this fucking thing. <laughs> that was slide five B. Move on to five C, sir. Uh, this is just airport six. Oh, six. Sorry, slide six. Yes. There's the clown hammer guy. There he is. Now, first when I entering first saw the this, frame, that's the first time I noticed him. I was like, "Holy shit! What the hell was that?" I paused it on Netflix. It was really hard to see on Netflix. I got myself the Blu-ray copy, which this is a screenshot from. On the Blu-ray, clear as day. That's a fucking clown hammer. It, it's not a suitcase with a long handle. Right. It's not a. It's not a. It's not an umbrella hooked around like a duffel bag. That's a fucking clown hammer. There is no <laughs> way that could be anything but a giant red mallet nope. ready to crush a clown. Definitely a clown hammer. Right. Now, if you advance to slide seven, there we go. It's just another shot of the clown hammer, and yep. to the right, uh, another shot of the guy holding the tree. Charles Bronson never sees the clown hammer. He turns just as the clown hammer passes. Yeah, he might have shot him if he saw him. I would like to see clown hammer take on uh, Charles Bronson. I, I think it would be a draw. It'd be a good fight, though. Sure. For, for all we know, there's a whole side story with the clown hammer guy meting out his own justice for his own ch- killed children. <laughs> yeah, it's a, you know what? Maybe it was going to be its own film, but it just never got off the ground. I think, you know what? I think I need to write that story <laughs> tonight after a couple of martinis. Oh, I all right, slide eight. Myself. 
<laughs> Slide eight. Slide eight. Here we go. Just another shot showing that the clown hammer guy is. Now, this is important because the clown hammer guy, this guy's not just walking through an airport with a giant clown hammer. He's walking towards the airplanes. Yeah. <laughs> well, come on. This guy. Kersey just got off a plane boarding a gun. Oh, uh, you're carrying this on, right? Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, we have no problems. Wait a minute. So that shit doesn't need to be x rayed because he's carrying it? How come they were hijacking planes every day in the 70s? There's like no security. There's just no, nothing. <laughs> they but hated us as much. <laughs> I I want to see this guy checking the clown. That clown hammer is not even going to fit in the overhead compartment. No, that's sitting no on his lap the whole ride through. That clown hammer is sitting on his lap with a handle across the two people sitting next to him. You, you, you don't mind if I put my clown hammer here, do you? <laughs> <laughs> I, I I have been traveling a lot in the past couple of years, and uh -huh. I guarantee you, you're not making it into the airport if you're carrying a clown hammer. No, no, that's no. that's a, that's a no. All right, things get a little weirder as we go on to slide nine. Slide nine. Okay, slide nine. Uh, Charles Bronson and, uh, or Paul and his son-in-law are heading towards the bench to have a little discussion about how life sucks. In mm. the background, you can see the tree guy. Uh, carrying the tree now at a 45 degree angle or 90 degree angle, and he's walking away from the jetway. Next to him, walking yeah. towards the gate, is Pimp Daddy. That's right. Well, Pimp he Daddy sh he should be around. all the way through the gates at this point. And we want to start watching the only person on the second level at all, the woman in the fur coat. <laughs> Top center, looking to the left, to, uh, to, the, to the right. That's right. Stage left. She, uh, right. you're right. She's the only, only thing up there. Only thing up there, standing there, almost posing. It's like, okay, where do I want to go? Oh, I can go left. Unless it's a mannequin. Next slide. <laughs> it's just right. advertising a fur coat. But I, oh, but that also, would be even creepier because that would mean no one is up there. Oh, did did you move the slide yet? Yeah, it's on ten. Go back, go back to nine. Okay. I also forgot to mention. We back? Yes, we are. I also forgot to mention that towards the far right, you can see a girl carrying snowshoes. <laughs> <laughs> and then just behind her to the, the far right is a woman with a dead child in her lap. <laughs> and during the during this later on, I, I, somehow the or, child comes back to life. Like, but there's a long there's a long section in this scene when the when they're walking around where she's shaking this dead child on her lap like little Billy, why aren't you breathing? It's from it's here it, it looks like Danny from The Shining. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> Red Rom, Red Rom. Yeah, That's the, what he looks flight, like. The flight back from the hotel was not a pleasant one, I no, tell you. No. Uh, next slide. So we're on 10, right? Uh, we're on 10 now, yes. Okay. So at, uh, on the second level, you see the woman in the fur coat now walking towards the stairs, the clown hammer stairs. Uh, are you sure? In number 10? Yeah, number ten on top. The the, she, the woman in the fur coat is above the steps. The son-in-law. Oh uh, yes, you're right. Oh wow, she's almost like it's yes. like camouflage. Just she almost looks like she's in the window. Yeah, yeah. Okay. There's nobody up there. So she's she's almost looks like she's looking at the camera and she's walking towards the staircase. And behind Paul, you can see the guy walking away with the potted tree. <laughs> which which, in the fact he's walking in that direction says only one thing to me. He got off the plane with that tree. <laughs> it, either I, that or he stole it from the actual airport. I mean, can, either one will work. And I can, in, in my head, I wish they could reshoot this and just have a, a scene like with the, the flight attendants on the plane, like just like waiting. So, oh man, that guy with the tree. What the fuck was that about? I know, I know. That's the, I, I, I will never get to see anything crazier than that. What's that guy? Is that guy carrying a hammer? <laughs> 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 They got with her one crazy. Was that a pimp? Uh, <laughs> uh, oh, speaking of pimps, uh, go to slide 11. 11. And in the back, coming away from the air airplanes, is the cowboy again. <laughs> so I, it's like they told these people to just, you know, walk, when you walk to one end, just start walking to the other end. Well, yeah. So you know, just, so just, just so that there's movement everywhere. Which works if you just look like a normal person, but if you're just like Clint Eastwood, <laughs> it's, it, fr from the good, the bad, and the ugly, 
it's, you're going to notice them. And also, let's look up at the top uh, second level. And if you notice the woman in the fur coat, yeah, at one point, she got halfway to the stairs and said, oh, no, wait, I'm going to go the other direction. So she's now all the way to the other end of the balcony. Right. So, all right, so in sl- slide 12. Slide, slide 12. And this is the next to last slide. Uh, let's, if you look up at the balcony, you'll notice to the far right that the, the woman in the fur coat went uh, from <laughs> turned around from the far left and went all the way back to the clown hammer stairs and is now descending the clown hammer stairs. She is actually walking down the stairs. Or- so she went all the way right, all the way left, and then all the way right again through the course of this short scene. Yep, she started in the middle. Yes. Now, just below her to the left, you'll notice that the woman with the dead child is now preparing to stuff him into a suitcase. <laughs> And to the and just pe- just to the left of Paul in the background, there's Pimp Daddy again coming away from the planes. <laughs> and the guy in fr- and the guy just in front of him, I'm pretty sure he was getting on the plane too. So I don't know. I guess like maybe they canceled all the flights. That's the only thing I can think of. Maybe. Hey, you never uh, but, know. I, but it's gate one through seven. There's there's definitely still stuff out there. You could just hang out there. Oh sure. Oh definitely. And then and then if you go to uh, slide thirteen. Okay, final slide. Beep. To the left, there's the goddamn <laughs> cowboy again, <laughs> heading back to the plane, and I'm almost convinced he's carrying a different suitcase this time. <laughs> I'm probably wrong, but I, I, God damn it! Why is the cowboy <laughs> heading back towards the plane? Uh, very observant of you, sir. Oh, and, and a, a young Stan Lee to the right, next to the girl in green. <laughs> uh, almost could be Hunter S. Thompson from a slight angle, but <laughs> <laughs> maybe, yeah. Uh, but uh, you know what's interesting? I did notice all of these things because as soon as I noticed the clown hammer, I'm like, <laughs> "Well, that, that I'm like, okay, there's there's a fucking guy in a poncho, there's a pimp, and I'm like, I'm looking for other things. I'm like, all right, there's the fucking clown hammer. Scott told me he kept saying clown hammer, and he goes, well, you got until we review it to figure it out. And you know, I saw it last night immediately because it was in my psyche because you told me about it. I yeah. might not have noticed any of this if you didn't say it. Um. I, I like to like like a couple of days afterwards. I I I uh, I mention I I would just text him randomly all week. Clown hammer. And at one point, Joey asked me, "Is this like a metaphor for something?" Said, no, no, it's a clown hammer. Because I was like, because I know the challenge was New York, and Tim Curry was in Times Square, and if this is a thing about uh, the TV movie of it, I fucking hate that movie. <laughs> I I don't care that it scared you when you were a kid. I could give a fuck. That Tim Curry is your worst nightmare because he's a cl- fucking hate that movie. I don't care if you think it's the best Stephen King movie ever made for television. I don't care. Well, I think it, it is utter shit, and I don't like it. I never did. It beats Tommy Knockers. It's better than Tommy Knockers, but I hate that fucking thing too. There isn't a single Stephen King made for TV movie that I like. I think they are oh, all wait. shit. Which one's the one with time travel? Uh, is that the uh, the uh, what is it the uh, green fuck. Langoliers the, the Langoliers. Langoliers with the green the, the green glow and, and or was that Tommy Knockers? Tommy Knockers is the green glow. Langoliers okay. is the is the plane is yeah. the airplane airplane time travel. Yes. I could give a fuck about the Langoliers. I can give a fuck about the stand. I can give a fuck about uh, fucking it. I hate them all. Rose red. You just, fuck you just hate clowns. That's all. Fuck Stephen King uh, movies, uh, or TV movies. He's got some oh. decent regular movies. And if, if slide thirteen is slide thirteen still up? Yeah, it is. Uh, to the right, I'm pretty sure that's the guy. The guy uh, with the plant talking to somebody, and the plant's gone. Yeah, it's it's not even there anymore. Yeah, so <laughs> it what, is. The, that is the guy. That the is the guy with the plant. He gave it yeah. to somebody. Because <laughs> again, he's got a white scarf. It's like you can still pick him out of a crowd. Yeah. What happened? He looks to like the he plant? just came from the fucking Met. <laughs> there's again at this point i don't care about paul anymore so yeah you're angry you're gonna kill some people i, I want to follow the cowboy and what if the cowboy and the clown hammer get on the same plane there's an awkward flight <laughs> yeah i've seen a man with a clown hammer before yes you mean you mean business <laughs> all right so the the slides are done <laughs> <laughs> yeah that was my air death wish airport presentation thank you very much <sighs> very good. Very, very good. I would like um, to even take that and separate that as a separate video and throw it on YouTube. Just that alone. 
Sure. What's with the fucking clown hammer? Death Wish clown hammer. <laughs> that would have been a great sequel, too, if, if they just like, ah, forget Paul, we're just going to follow the clown hammer guy. Oh, Avenging the death of his, his grandfather clown. Grandfather. Maybe that's, you know, it could be it. An, another thing, we should mention it because we are reviewing it. Um, and it's probably... Kersey, Paul, he doesn't catch the guys that, you know, kill and, and uh, rape uh, his wife and daughter. No. He doesn't no. kill them. But that the reason why, from what I gather, the reason why is because it sets him off on this vigilante, uh, you know, a tandem. If they caught the guys. Tan- tangent. Tangent. Uh, tandem. That works, too. Anyway. I think so. Yeah, sure it does. You could look it up. Um, <laughs> uh, it works because if, if he caught them or the police did, there's really no motive to continue doing what he's doing. Okay. Uh, tandem is two things arranged one in front of the other. So I, I no. Yeah, I guess you're right. Sorry. I, I, you know what? No, I, I was, I, I was remembering the definition as you started talking. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, uh, Tandem. Like <laughs> yeah, yeah. What? The bike. Tandem bike. Oh, tandem. oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Tandem. Tan- <laughs> no, tangent. You're right. That's but, that no, is. No, what... So he, he so he won a, he won on a uh, he won on a killer tandem. T- a killer tandem. Yes. Uh, no, you're right. I meant tangent. That's okay. Keep going. I didn't mean to stop you. No, that's what I was. That's what I was getting at. Is that it, yeah. if the police or even himself caught the the guys, it's it. There's no movie. Well, yeah, because there is no closure, and that's unless kind of the... he kills them at the end of the film, which would have been cool, but it didn't have to happen, and it didn't. Right, and and, and that's the big thing in the book too, because there's a sequel uh, as well, and in in the books, the whole idea is, is like uh, again, he never even sees you never even see them do anything. He finds out after the fact, and it's just just the whole idea of this, this the violence in society eroding them away. And uh, taking a, like a, a liberal, a bleeding heart liberal character uh, who's always felt for the poor and, and the indigent and lashing out against these criminals that are, you know, wreaking havoc, so to speak. Havoc. And uh, that there, there is no end in sight to it. And then when he finally decides to stop, there's a copycat out there. Uh, but that, that might be spoiling the books, um, which are available on Kindle uh, on Amazon. By the way, I'll put I'll, I'll post links on our Facebook page because because I'm awesome, awesome like that. All right, yeah. So, um, so should we rate the film red. and then I can give you your movie challenge? Uh, sure. On IMDb right now, uh, Death Wish is at seven stars, solid, with twenty two thousand votes. Seven, huh? Uh huh. Kind of high. Uh, maybe not. Maybe seven's okay. I'm trying to think of why I'd give it a six instead of a seven. I mean, for the time... The, the first half... Of, oh, can I mention one other thing? Yeah. Before we get there, it just occurred to me. Uh, we, we only see like the, the great room and the bedroom of this apartment, this New York City apartment, uh, throughout the whole thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, then near the end, when the cops start tailing him... Uh, he, he 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 can't just like sit at home. So he sneaks out to kill some more bad guys, and he sneaks. Apparently, they have a back door through the kitchen. Do you remember the kitchen? Yeah. <laughs> this whole house, white, uh, feng shui. You know, like a designer came in and did it. Everything's like nice and clean and and solid lines. Uh, Art Deco a little Except bit for maybe. That yellow foil wallpaper. Yeah, <laughs> bright yellow on like reflective foil and it's a small it's like it's it's about the size it, a bathroom yeah would be the right size for that tiny dingy can't have been in the same building well here's the thing can't and, have been and the same and building. i'm gonna i'll explain to you um that used to be a, a career of mine before i i got into uh, it my father owned a wallpaper and paint company for decades i mean 30 or 40 years easy uh, and even when I was working with him, which is just a mere 15 years ago, we were still hanging paper like that. Um, but in the sixties 
and the 70s, foil wallpaper was, uh, as Gino said, uh, I say, the cat's meow. So I am not surprised that they had a room that looked like that. I really am not, because I cannot tell you how many fucking houses I did work in where I'm either hanging that shit or I've seen it. So when, when the only thing that I said when that scene came up, and I'm like, wow, that is some really yellow foil paper. And th- the thing about foil wallpaper, when you hung that stuff, it became, it was your wall. You couldn't just remove that shit. So it was there permanently. The only thing you could do is either rip the wall out <laughs> and start over or paint or wallpaper over it. Those are your two options. So uh, I wouldn't even be surprised if they're like, yeah, maybe we should do something with this. And it's like, yeah, no, that's not coming off. <laughs> it's it's here to stay forever. Uh, so it's funny you mentioned uh, the, the foil wallpaper, but it was the first I saw oh. I just immediately. <laughs> and uh, uh, I... Just behind you, while you were talking, they had mm-hmm. the scene where the cop, uh, they, they, they think he's the, uh, they oh, think, the they, they, the, yeah, so, so the, uh, the cop, uh, Gardenia, she, takes a locksmith up to the, up to his house, like, yeah, let me in. And he lets him in. And that's it. He's just slipping around. Like, wow. No, no search warrant. No, uh, due pro, just, <laughs> just, yep. yeah, I'm going to go up, I'm, I'm going to go up and stoop at this guy's house. Okay, fine. Oh, yeah. I love it when he sees his own face on People magazine. Like, He's famous enough to be on People magazine. Yeah, no. and again, while you're again, it's break- like you said, they're just selling magazines. Yeah, in the background, when they cut to the street while he's breaking in, big billboard, Newsweek. So really? Oh yeah, the then the other one, the New Yorker. <laughs> Man, magazines were the shit back then. Yeah, they sure were. Man, wow. Uh, so we hey. we were saying uh, seven. Uh, um, I'd be I'd be okay with a six. I don't think I fight you too hard if you really wanted a seven, though, just because I, 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 of the time that it came out and uh, the fact that it it isn't a terrible movie. I don't think it's a very good movie, but typical <clears throat> for the time period. Very it is, for yeah, time. for the time period, it, it it fits, it works, but um, uh, just just for the Herbie Hancock soundtrack alone, I'm willing to go to a six. Okay, I'm I'm good with that. All right, six it is. And uh, taking a look at the IMDb demographics, which always thrill me, uh, highest demographic is seven at 33% as far as ratings go. And then uh, it's, it's pretty across the board as for uh, demographics. Uh, the lowest is um, females under 18 at 6.8. And the highest is males under 18 at 7.3. So it really just – it's. It's all around six or seven. Not, not really any fluctuation there. Males under uh, eighteen really were digging the nudity, huh? Uh, well, uh, yeah, or the clown hammer, or the well, yeah. probably oh, more and, than and, nudity. And, and and four IMDb staff members rated it an average of six point two, which I give a fuck. So thank you, <laughs> IMDb, for letting me know. <laughs> you know, I don't want to know what Sally at the video store likes to watch at night, and I don't care what IMDb people think of the movies they're posting about. So. Let's just fucking stop that, huh? They're never going to stop that. I don't care what people I, I I don't care you know what most people I know think about movies and books, let alone some stranger that's stocking the shelves. Yeah, I agree with but, that. But you know that. But I'm 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 just being sure. That's all. Okay. All right, everybody. Episode one hundred and seventy-one. Uh, make sure you go to our website at moviesucktastic.com. I cannot reiterate enough. It is completely brand new. You should definitely check it out. Uh, starting next week, Scott and I, I know we've been saying it, but I'm going to make sure we test Ustream so that we can do that officially. Uh, cause if my computer crashes with Ustream, then I know it's not, it's my computer. <laughs> it's like the graphics card or something. Um, but anyway, um, you can listen to the show live there or you can watch the show live. You can listen to it, uh, or you can download it. You can go to iTunes and you can listen to the show and download it there as well. You can leave us voicemail at 908-514-4470. You can email us. The address is themovieguys at moviesucktastic.com. You can go to our Facebook page at facebook.com slash moviesucktastic. You can go to our Tumblr page at moviesucktastic.tumblr.com. You can also 
You can also go and download the free app for your phone or tablet for Android. It's 100% free, and everything I just said you can do right on there. Uh, makes your life a lot easier. Take it on the go. It's uh, it's really good, and it's very free. Oh, and that yeah. should that should do it. So do you have any wisdom for everyone? Oh, yeah. What do you got? I kill rich cunts! I kill rich cunts! I kill rich cunts! <laughs> All right, everybody. We'll talk to you. Cunt, yeah, that's good. I like it. Whenever you call, whenever you call me, that's what it does. There. <laughs> All right, guys. I'll talk to you later. Bye. I'll talk to you later. We'll talk to you next week. Goodbye. We, we, well, we'll record it, and then you'll listen to it at a later date. Yeah, that, that's what's going to happen. Well, unless right. you tune in live, which we recommend. In which case, we'll talk and record it, and you'll watch us talking. Yeah. <laughs> All right, everybody. Bye-bye.